got something cool for you today. And no, it's not my glasses. Although, right? Right? They're magnets. This is not about glasses. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today, I am, however, going to share a really cool stencil mask from My Favorite Things. I love masking and double stenciling, and it'll all make sense when you see how this comes together. But this mask is super smart, and I'm excited to show you the card project. So stick around. That video is coming up next. I mean, they're magnets. Here's a look at the products I'm going to be using today from My Favorite Things, starting with this layered stencil set called Flower Fusion. You get five stencils to create a beautiful floral pattern with some leafery in there as well. I also have this Essential Messages stamp set, this really nice font, and all these very all-purpose greetings. But the thing that I'm most excited about today, this mask. This is called the Smart Mask High Low Strip. And the idea here is to mask off an area, do whatever you're gonna do, we're gonna use stencils, and then you have an area left over for a greeting. I think that is a really smart design. I'm excited to use this. I have pulled some colors because I went online and found well, I found a web page that has some really great color palettes. The one I'm using today is this one, and I'll be sure to put a link in the description if you want to check out this website because it has some really great info on color theory and then lots of color palette ideas that would be great for card making. So let's get into the project. So I'm going to start by using the Smart Mask High Low Strip. And the thing that I love about this is that you've got a two-thirds, one-thirds kind of design. But I'm going to first tape this onto my cardstock. Now I've got it placed here so that it looks pretty much framed out properly. But then I'm gonna take some low-tack tape and put it on the back so that this doesn't shift because we're gonna be doing double stenciling where one stencil is gonna go over this together and I don't want this one to move until we are done so and because these are smaller stencils I didn't want to use my waffle flower grip mats as a standalone because I feel like that is just not going to work so here's what we'll do lift this guy up for now now that we're placed all right and then I am going to use my misty which has my little a grip mat in there because if I push all of these into the corner they're going to line up every time and so that's gonna save me some time with my stenciling we're gonna start out with our first color which is gonna be nectar and the first stencil which is stencil number one so you can see here if I put this right into the corner it doesn't quite hit the grip mat so instead we're gonna pop it in the corner tape it to hold it, just a couple pieces, and I can keep using this tape, and I can do that on every single stencil. So, let's get started. I'll turn on some music and speed it up.
So that's my panel, and I didn't realize the layer order. I kind of played with it a little bit, and those little centers needed to be darker. So that's why I brought in the Spiced Cider, because I feel like that is in the same color family. But before I take this out, I wanted to show you how I've been cleaning my stencils in between. I just take my rubbing alcohol, spray on here, take one of my cleaning cloths, and it cleans the stencils really well, gets the ink off, but it also dries immediately. And I've been doing that off camera in between each one. Okay, so love, love this little, uh, learn, learned about this from my friend Carissa and it works great. So let's take a look at what our panel looks like now. And I really, I like these colors together. And when I peel this off, you will see the leftover, jewels not tools you will see the panel and how that looks now so it takes that pattern right and it splits it I'm just gonna become crazy tape lady hands here and now I have this nice area for my greeting it's not fun I love I love a mask that does that and then I can clean that as well but that I'm just gonna let dry though for just a few minutes before I stamp and emboss my greeting one other note this the color powder my pad is not powder I don't know what happened but powder is a much lighter blue I still like the way this turned out but I need to uh, I need to reorder my powder pad. I think I got one of the very early ones and it, it might have been mislabeled. Now I'm gonna take one of the greetings from this sheet and I thought I would do your In My Thoughts. I love reminding people that I'm thinking about them, but now you can see how this is perfectly set up to be stamped right here in the center. We'll pick that up. I'm gonna place this right back down in here, press it into the grip mat, and I'm gonna run my finger over the stamp just to prime it a little bit, and grab my Versamark ink, my clear embossing ink, and my anti-static powder. Now, I'm gonna put a little extra powder over the design, just in case any of my powder wants to stick to the dye ink. Dye inks do dry really quickly, but sometimes they stick and that can all be brushed away. All right, let's go ahead and ink up the greeting. I think I'll stamp it a couple of times. I'll just press that with my fingers. We'll give that a second to transfer and we'll go ahead and do it one more time. Like that and transfer. Let me grab my little paper catch and my embossing powder. Set that aside and I've just got a little piece of cheap copy paper here that I like to use. I will hold on to this with my clothespin for embossing. Keep my fingers safe from the heat. And here I'm just going to pour the Brutus Monroe, this is gilded, right over the top and you can see where it's stuck. I'll have to brush that away. Oh, that's gonna look great. And here's how you do that. We'll just get this back in first, like that. But what I'll do here is just brush it right off with this little angled shader. So the dye inks sometimes do catch a little of that embossing powder if they're not completely dry. All right, but that placement looks really nice. So let's heat up our heat tool and melt this powder. All right. Look how pretty that is with the warm gold greeting. Now, paper is a little warped, so I'm gonna take a die and just trim a little tiny bit off of this. I'm going to use this die, it's the outermost A2 layers die, 
and this is four inches by five and a quarter. And the thing that's nice about this, this can perfectly frame out what I just did with just a little margin. See that? I think that's gonna look great. All right, so it's not as much white space, but I think once I have that cut, it also helps to flatten out my panel. So I'll cut this out real quick and show you. And now what I can do is I still have that nice little framing of the design, right? Where I stenciled and I can pick a coordinating color of cardstock to match. Let me grab that and we'll make a note card. I'm going to use Nectar cardstock to make my note card. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter. So we'll score here right at five and a half. Fold that down. Give that a press with my Teflon bone folder. Like that. I've got some Simon Says Stamp Big Mama foam tape on the back, and I like this because it is so low loft. It's not super puffy, but it's puffy enough to give it a little separation. And we're gonna pop this right onto our note card. Okay. Forgive my head if it gets in the way. I want to have just that little bit of margin space all the way around, framing the panel like that. Oh, I think that's so pretty. I really like that. Now, the one thing that I didn't think of was when I blended over, I could have planned the layering a little better. So I actually wonder if I want to put some gold on here. And I have, where are they? I have some of these gold pearls that might be really nice with this. So let me Kind of, in a, kind of in a pearl thing right now. Um, and you know what, I'm just gonna spread them out because I'm looking for the really small, I'm, I'm looking for specific sizes. So what if I took this friend, and well, it needs to be bigger. I think I do need a bigger one. I could add some gold here, one there, one there to kind of cover up the ones that didn't look great because of the blend. But then I need, well, I need a couple more and you know what I could do? Let's go you and you. For these bigger ones and one more down here and that gives me my odd number. Oh, did I pick you up? Nope. That I like to have. And I think that's actually a really nice way to have some on here. So let's grab our liquid glue. Little, little bit of, little bit of booping happening here. And this is Gina K Designs Connect glue. We'll just pop it in the center, a little glue and boop. Well, I had quite a bit of glue on that one, but this will be fine. Glue and boop. cover that right up. I mean, you could, you could go to town and put boop, all kinds on here. I just thought it would be something to add a little shine, boop, a little texture, and would be pretty and cover up boop, the blend on those two that I did not think about in advance. And that is my finished card project. So I have this stencil. I love the way the pattern continues. You are left with this little area that you can put your greeting in. I think the stencil design is such a smart idea. And there we go. I look forward to trying this out with other stencils in the future. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more card projects featuring products from My Favorite Things, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.